Hello everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to extract pure neodymium from neodymium magnets and what surprising things I encountered while doing that. Let us start off with a little bit of history. I think in one way or another most of us encounter neodymium magnets in life, whether that be when we buy magnets for our refrigerators or when we use computer hard disk drives, which also use neodymium magnets. Nowadays, this type of magnets is being used more and more in lots of branches of science and technology, thanks to their high efficiency. However, this hasn't always been the case. First magnets has been created even before first people were, because even iron ore, which is called magnetite, has magnetic properties. Such natural and quite weak magnets were used even by the ancient Egyptians. However, it became common to use magnets less than 50 years ago, when people started using cheap samarium cobalt magnets, and later on, even cheaper ferrite magnets. Later, in the 90s of the 20th century, scientists both in Japan and the USA invented a new type of magnet which is an alloy of rare earth metal called neodymium, iron and boron. Adding neodymium helps to significantly increase efficiency of this material's magnetic properties. At the dawn of their discovery, back in 1982, this material was made of powder consisting of neodymium, boron and iron, which were baked together. At the same time, such magnets were several times more effective than ferrite magnets, but they had one major flaw, which is a low Curie point. This means that their magnetic properties quickly weaken as the temperature increases up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is why they could not be used in some spheres. However, science has advanced since then and modern neodymium magnets contain certain additives which make such magnets withstand heat above 200 degrees Celsius. They even have special symbols on them showing their magnetic force and Curie point. To see what modern neodymium magnets consist of and extract neodymium from them, I purchased such a magnet from a Chinese manufacturer for my experiments. Today, this country is a leader in the production of such magnets, because China has monopolized the market of rare earth metals, one of which is neodymium. First, I need to dissolve this small magnet in nitric acid. To speed up the process, I decided to smash the magnet with a hammer. Don't be fooled by the look of this magnet, which seems to be as hard as iron. After a couple of blows with a hammer, such a magnet easily fragments into pieces, because it consists of a fragile alloy, which is also easily oxidized in the air. To prevent corrosion, neodymium magnets are coated in a layer of copper and nickel, which is why they appear to be hard. Then I decided to dissolve such a broken magnet in nitric acid which is why I dropped it into 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid. Right away, there started a reaction, producing a lot of orange and highly toxic nitrogen dioxide gas. Here, the magnet's main components, which are iron and neodymium, have oxidized into nitrates, and boron leftovers produced a small amount of boric acid, which can dissolve in such a liquid. The magnet's nickel coating dissolved in the acid, but it was really thin, which is why I can just neglect it. To finish the reaction, I left the flask overnight under the extractor fan. On the next day, the whole magnet completely dissolved, leaving a muddy solution with sediment. The content of the flask is a mixture of iron and neodymium nitrate and leftovers of boron. I need to dissolve them all. First, I add some water to the flask in order for the sediment to slightly dissolve and in order to make it easier to work with the solution. Then I needed to remove iron salts and somehow extract neodymium salts. To do that, I decided to employ the so-called oxalic method. I prepared concentrated oxalic acid solution in another beaker. To run the experiment, I poured some of this solution into a plastic test tube. After that, 
I added a few drops of the solution from the flask. There formed a sediment in the plastic test tube. This is a good sign. After that, I let the solution sit for a couple of hours. Two hours later, we can easily distinguish between the neodymium oxalate sediment and the green solution, which is an oxalic complex of free valent iron. Thus, when an excess amount of oxalic acid is added to such a magnet solution, iron and rare earth metals can be divided. Their oxalates are insoluble in water and form sediment. What matters is to make sure there is no too violent iron in solution, which also forms an insoluble oxalate. To prevent that from happening, I added some hydrogen peroxide to the magnet solution. I also saw black sediment, consisting of amorphous boron particles, which didn't dissolve in the acid. To extract all neodymium from the solution, I used 2 liters of oxalic acid. After that, I left the solution overnight, in order for as many neodymium compounds as possible to sink to the bottom. After running decantation of the solution and rinsing of the sediment, I began to realize that there were some other rare earth metals besides neodymium. The thing is, pure neodymium oxalate as well as its oxide are of pinkish and violetish colors, which depending on lighting can change color. When lit up by a luminescent lamp, it appears to be pink, and when light up by LED lamp, it appears to be greenish. My sediment in the beaker was grayish. That is why to get to know for sure if there were any impurities, first I dried up the powder, and then I decided to heat it up to 500 degrees Celsius. At such a temperature, oxalates of rare earth metals decay and we can identify compounds formed, judging by other colors. This mixture started to glow brown and when it was exposed to the reducing burner flame, started to get more pale again. Apparently, there was some other rare earth metal in the neodymium oxalate, compounds of which are of dark color. Fortunately, there are not that many options, and I immediately suspected that it was praseodymium. In contrast to pale oxides of other rare earth metals, praseodymium oxide is compound of black color. Besides, it has mixed oxidation states like iron ore. Okay, I get it with praseodymium. But what about other impurities? Is there neodymium at all? To get to know that, I dissolved some of the obtained brown powder in nitric acid. I got such a greenish solution, as that's because of praseodymium impurities, compounds of which are of bright green color. However, if we change lighting from LED to luminescent, the color of the solution will change, which means there are neodymium compounds in the solution. If we shine with a different light sources on the test tube with a solution of pure neodymium chloride, we can observe the same effect. Also, I decided to see how many left towers iron compounds I have in the solution, which is why I ran a qualitative iron reaction. For comparison, first I added a drop of 10% iron chloride solution into a 1% yellow potassium ferrocyanide which identifies iron in the tested solution, forming blue sediment of Prussian blue. Now I add in a drop of the tested solution to 2% potassium ferrocyanate solution. The reaction did not start immediately, and the color isn't very saturated, which means there is not that much iron in the obtained oxide. Unfortunately, impurities of all the rare earth metals can be white and can only be detected with a chromatograph and by employing special techniques we don't have at our university. That is why it is not likely that I will be able to identify all impurities in this brown solution. Another problem is that chemical separation of one rare earth metal from another is a very difficult thing to do because of the very similar chemical properties of these elements. It is done with the help of special ion exchangers and is very costly. That is why Chinese manufacturers usually don't bother to completely separate neodymium from praseodymium, 
Adding 2% terbium and dysprosium to the mixture compensates for that. These additives raise the working temperature of the obtained magnets. In the end, I tried to reduce the obtained mixture of neodymium and prosiodymium oxides with the metallic lithium. To do that, I made such a crucible from niodium foil and attached it to the retort stand. After that, I mixed the obtained oxide with pieces of lithium and added 40% of table salt in order to boost separation of metal from the lithium oxide. When the reaction ended, I dissolved the obtained lump in water, in order for the remaining lithium to react with water. At the end of the day, I confirmed that these chemical reactions are very complex, because I got a ridiculously small amount of the metal. The rest either burned down or didn't react at all. At factories, rare earth metals are obtained from fluorides, through electrolysis with the help of special devices. So, I think now you really understood that neodymium magnets are not made only from neodymium, iron and boron. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.